Welcome AEIS artists. To finish off your section of Women's History Month, we're gonna look at yet one more artist, which you should have learned a little bit about, um, Miss Helen's work. So another abstract artist seems to be a theme. Um, so anyways, we are gonna be inspired by Ellen's abstract creation of her work. And today we are going to work with two sheets of watercolors and we're just laying down the pre-work for when I see you in six or eight weeks whenever I see you next and this paper will be dry and we'll be able to create with it so we're just doing our prep work for the artwork that we are going to be using this these pieces for the next time I see you. So everybody will have um, two white sheets of paper so everybody's gonna get two really big white sheets of paper. Okay, they're pretty big. And you're going to put your name and your teacher's name, and where you sit is usually helpful, on the back with pencil. If you don't have a pencil, there is some in a yellow, yellow basket right by red too. So your name, your teacher's name, and where you're sitting at goes on the back. Then turn it over. So today we are going to work with um, a couple fun techniques of, with watercolor. Uh, again, we're just creating color. We're gonna create, and this one is still a little wet, we're gonna create a cool sheet, only cool colors. And then you're gonna create a sheet with just warm colors. So you're just gonna create these two big sheets, um, putting color down, warm colors and cool colors. Now notice that I can still see the three warm colors. I can still see yellow, red, and orange. I'm not trying to create only orange, which is the color you'll create when you mix the, these three colors together. So we wanna be able to see three different colors. Same thing with the cool colors. Now, if you mix all the cool colors together, you kind of get mud. But we, I, don't, I wanna be able to see purple, greens, and blues. Okay, so they're pretty big sheets, so you might need to stand uh, when you're working with these. So everybody has a watercolor set with a lots of different choices. Hopefully when you get to them, they'll be clean. So these are nice uh, sets. They have a variety of warm colors. So we've got five warm colors to choose from, and they have a bunch. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, six cool colors. Actually, I think this is also a cool color, but I'm not sure what color this is. So you have a lot of cool colors and at least five warm colors, okay? So you're gonna use this cassette, and if yours um, is dirty, hopefully the person before you took care of it, but if it's dirty, you're gonna clean it first. A good way of cleaning these sets is with a paper towel. You're just going to tap out the color that you don't want, so you just kind of remove the color that you don't want so that the sets are clean. So when you are finished with your set, please check each and every color that you can see them that they are as good or better than when you came. Okay, so please check and respect these watercolor sets. Now, because I have four classes working on these, if you are the last class of the day, uh, some of the colors might have been used, and then just ask for a clean set, okay? Or a, some type of set that has a color that you're missing. So, once you have your name on your watercolor paper, you are then going to eventually get a red get your red bucket filled with water and grab a couple brushes now because we're working with big paper you might want to try and grab the black handled brushes because the brush the brushes are a little bit fatter and bigger to use all right let me set up here so with my white sheet of paper i am going to start with the warm colors first and we're going to use a couple different methods of adding our watercolor so one of the methods that we are going to use, one of the techniques is called wet and wet. And that's where you get your paper wet and then your watercolors are wet. Another method that we're gonna use is a traditional wet, wet uh, watercolors on dry paper. And then we're gonna try and create some balloons. A bloom is made by touching your paintbrush that has water on it 
charge with water and paint in a wet area and just putting a dot down and the watercolor will bloom. And then also tilting, which means we're gonna move our paper from side to side. So let me show you all of those techniques. So I'm gonna turn my paper down so that you just see it. So if you're the first class of the day, you need to activate your watercolors. And by doing that, if you don't remember, is you're gonna get your brush wet. And then I'm gonna start with my warm colors. I'm gonna put my, um, I'm gonna start with the lightest color of my warm colors. I'm going to massage in the water so that I no longer just have water that is colored, but I actually am creating paint, okay? So I am activating my paint by making sure my water seeps down and um, activates, wakens up all the little paint cells. Okay, oops, got my what yellow messy. Because these brushes are pretty big, the tendency of picking up other colors that you don't want is great. If that happens, like it just happened to me, you can, again, use your paper towel to get out the color you don't want. Okay, so my yellow is pretty activated. And what you're going to do, again, you don't know what you're going to, I'm not going to tell you what we're going to do, do with these pieces, but you're just going to, again, I'm using the wet paint on the dry paper and I'm just going to create circles and you're going to repeat your color because with artwork we want to have some repeating colors over because it just kind of makes the piece come more together. So I put my yellow down. This was again wet watercolor on dry paper. The other technique that you can go so I'm going to use the yellow still again, is get your paper wet. So I got my water, my brush clean, and I'm just going to put some water down on a couple of spots of the paper. And now I'm going to pick up some wet watercolor and put it in. Okay. So I'm just putting in the wet watercolor down on the spots that I had gotten wet. Okay. So that's wet and wet when you wet your paper and wet your brush. The other technique, and I'm going to change my colors now, is um, a bloom. So with a bloom, I'm going to first activate my next color. I'm going to activate this darker orange. Again, with each color that you want to activate in order to get really good paint and not just colored water, you want to take the time to activate it. Okay. Okay, so the next technique is gonna be the bloom. And with bloom, you are going to once again put wet down. So I'm gonna clean my brush. I'm gonna get this spot wet right up here. And now I'm just gonna tap in some color and it's better if it's really good pigment. And you'll notice that it's gonna spread. So let me see if I can pick up my paper. So if I tap in the color, it's going to just move all by itself to where the um, to where the water leads it. Okay, so I'm going to kind of repeat my orange in a couple spots. Again, I'm not mixing color. I don't want to mix my yellow with my orange. Okay. So again, you just want to redo the colors and take your time. Kind of think about your placement. And if you're standing, you can use really big strokes. The next um, technique, so we did wet and wet. We did wet paper, a wet paint, dry paper. We just did a bloom. And now I'm going to do a, a tilt or a drip. So I'm going to try and get some, I'm going to put some water at the top of my page. I'm going to pick up some red because I haven't used red yet because that's another warm color. So I've got my red. I'm going to turn my paper around like this. So I put some red here and now I'm going to tilt. So with my hand just underneath, I'm just going to kind of see if I can move that liquid water. You don't want it too wet. I'm not really picking it up a lot, but I'm just kind of tilting it. Okay. So you're just kind of running that paint, that really wet paint around, okay? So those are the techniques that you can use. You want to fill up your whole paper with water. So 
I'm going to add some more. And I like the circles, so I'm just going to add some circles. And again, you want to repeat your color so that you have repeated color all over. Okay, you can go vertical so you can kind of paint. But again, you want to try and not create one uniform orange color because that's what will happen with all the warm colors mixing together. So try to make sure that you can still see the reds. The yellows and the orange. So make sure you're trying to use, and again, the more you massage in your water, the deeper the pigment is going to be. So I'm massaging in and I'm adding color. So when you paint, you're not going to drag your brush on the paper. Try to use the tip. So these are nice fat brushes, and we're going to use the tip. You're gonna to try and cover up all of the white spaces. So you might have to take a little bit breather. And because our tables are not really large, the paper that you are not painting, so right now I'm doing my warm colors. For my cool color paper, I might wanna carefully either put it on my seat if I'm not, if I'm standing, and if you're sitting down working, you might want to carefully put it underneath your table. Don't step on it. I don't have extra watercolor paper to pass out if you got footprints on it. So, again, you're going to create one sheet all with warm colors. Okay. And I'm kind of going over some of my yellows. And then, you know, kind of stand back and take a look and say, where do I need more color? On mine, I might want to put some more oranges. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up some of this dark orange and I'm massaging in, I'm activating my color. And I'm gonna put some here. We are not really splatter painting. I don't wanna see kids splatter painting. Um, one, it gets everywhere and that's not what we're doing. It'll get on your cool color paper. We are just moving the paper, I mean moving the paint over the paper to just create a warm sheet and then a cool sheet. So I probably could work on it a little bit more. This is my warm sheet. And once that's dry, you're going to put it on the drying rack. So the first class could probably use drying rack ones and two, and you might have to carefully slide it in this way. And then we probably could put two classes because everybody's gonna have probably two big sheets of paper. The next paper that you're gonna do is the cool color. So make sure you put your warm color in a safe place on the drying rack. And then you might need to change your water and then grab your other paper, your name's already on the back, to do only cool colors, only cool colors. So I know this looks like it might be yellow here, but it's really a lime green. So it's really a light green color. So once my drying rack is full, I'm gonna have students use the big tables in the computer lab. So if my drying rack is full, you're going to take one at a time and then there might be a class in there, so you just gotta be quiet. Put it on the black tables that are in the computer lab. Try to keep things close together so we can get two classes on the drying rack and two classes or more in the computer lab. So enjoy having fun looking at Helen's work and it's on the backboard. So she did some big, bold, abstract pieces and working with watercolor techniques. Again, the watercolor techniques are wet and wet, your paper is wet and the paint is wet. And that's kind of a fun technique. With wet and wet, you also can do the bloom technique where you have some water in your paper and your, your paintbrush is really, really wet with color and you just Dop it down into the puddle and it just kind of explodes or balloons, okay? And you can also then do the tilting where you have, again, very wet paper, but be careful how much water you're getting on it. And your hand is underneath it and you're not picking it up and tilting, but pretend my hand's on the table. And you're very carefully just trying to control the tilt, okay? So when you are done, you are going to dump your water and bring your red bucket back to your table. You're going to put your brushes in the brush rinse containers in the sink. 
Uh, use the wipes if you've got paint on your table because that's okay. And then look at your watercolors and make sure that they are clean. So mine, I have a little bit of orange in my yellow, so I would take a paper towel and try to clean that up, okay? So now my colors are ready for the next student and they're not contaminated with other colors. So please respect the colors. So I can't wait to see all of our pieces. Again, we're doing some pieces for uh, a rough draft that we will be, uh, not a rough draft, we are prepping our work for something we're gonna use these pieces for in a collage activity when I see you next time. So you're gonna create one totally warm paper and one totally cool paper. So have fun with watercolors.